morning from the Eastern time zone. Depending on where you are, it might be afternoon, it might be nighttime. But for me, good morning, coming to you from sunny South Florida for the fourth video of my warm up series on week one, finishing up high and on top with 35 minutes. 35 minutes, everyone. We did it. So, for everyone that has been following me since we started on Monday, I want to congratulate you all for making it out to the end of this first week at 35 minutes. It's going to be a good walk today. And by now, hopefully you're starting to get a little bit more used to this. You're starting to get used to the pace of things. Your body's warming up a little bit more. You're feeling good. You're creating that habit because from here on out, it only gets more fun. So in true task with me style, I brought my list of things to talk about. And we have some fun things to talk about today and some interesting things to talk about today. So stay tuned, stay listening. It's going to be a good time. So again, just want to let you all know, this is the wrap up for week one. So what does that mean? It means that tomorrow, Sunday, I'm not going to be doing a video. It is a rest day. And if you've listened to these videos before, you know that I do honor the rest days. However, I have been doing live streams on Reddit for other days. However, I do believe that Sunday should be a true rest day. So on Sundays, there will be no video uploaded to YouTube, which is okay because the workout itself calls for a rest day. And there will also be no live streaming on any other platform, at least for now. Maybe in the future that will change. But for the first couple of series, maybe these first couple of weeks as part of this series, I will not be doing any sort of video content tomorrow. Now let's talk about what you all have accomplished this week. If you have followed along this journey with me, you have walked for a total of one hour and 40 minutes, which is not a trivial amount, so pat yourselves on your back. If this is your first time coming, first video that you're watching, I highly encourage you to start at the beginning of the week, look at all the videos that I've made up until this point, so you can be in touch with the rest of the group. If you do decide to do all of it in one go, I would say it's okay. I would say it's easier to develop a habit if you break it up into smaller chunks. You don't wanna overwhelm yourself and say, I gotta do an hour and 40 minutes today so that next Monday, when we start again for week two, I'm caught up. I would say take your time. I'll continue uploading the videos. You won't, you won't lose out on any content and you'll still be able to follow with me because the videos will be there. So we can go ahead and do is on Monday, you start on week one, you finish that out, and by the time you're done, week two will already be done. So you don't even have to wait. You can sort of pick your own schedule. However you want. If you want to do it all in one go, or if you want to wait, the content will be there. You'll be able to follow along, and you won't miss out. So very excited for everyone that has joined here with me. Next week's going to be a little more intense. Not much. We're still going to start off with a 15-minute walk on Monday. We don't want to immediately jump the gun. But we'll be adding three minutes to the other walks that we've been doing. So instead of 25 minutes, we will be doing 28 minutes. Instead of 35 minutes like today, we'll be doing 38 minutes. 38 minutes will be topping it off for next week. So slow, incremental steps is the important thing here. And I know that from firsthand experience, and I've seen it happen to other folks when they try and get into a cardio routine or weight training, strength training routine, they jump the gun, they go too fast, and they get injured. Working out is not a sprint, it's a marathon. We're in, in it for the long haul. But I promise you and I guarantee you that if you stick along with me, you will see results and you will be pleased. You'll develop that foundation and that habit to want to continue along with the program. So I wanna talk, I wanna allude a little bit to what I said earlier about Reddit. Reddit recently has become my main focus apart from this YouTube channel. This YouTube channel, is meant to serve as the de facto playlist if you're following the workout guide to a T. This is where I'll be posting all the tasks that I'm doing, how long I'm doing them for, all the information surrounding them. And if you do them with me, if you wanna follow along with me, YouTube is the place to come. If you fulfill the tasks on YouTube, it means you're on track. Now, if you wanna talk more, if you wanna engage with the community, if you wanna have a live, experience, I encourage you all to visit Reddit. 
I'll be posting links to my Reddit account on the description to this video. And I'll also post links to Twitter where I post when I will be going live on Reddit. In these past couple of days, I've had a ton of fun reaching out with the Reddit community. And it has been so cool to do live experiences because during these videos, you know, I write my list, I sort of plan what I'm gonna talk about. It's already scripted in my head. You know, some, sometimes I'll go off topic or I'll remember something I didn't write down and that's perfectly normal. But on Reddit Live, it's different because people ask me things as they see fit. It's a sort of ask me anything type of situation. It's spontaneous and I get to engage with everyone that's doing these things with me. It's where I get to learn who's doing it. Is it helpful? Is it not helpful? What I can do that's better? What do you guys already like about it? It actually helps me improve even more than these YouTube videos. So if you're not already watching me live on Reddit, I encourage you to follow me on Twitter where I will continue posting updates on my Reddit live schedule. I may do one later today, depending. And like I said, as a reminder, I won't do any live streaming or YouTube videos on Sundays, but surely next week, I will continue posting on Twitter. You can find all my Reddit live streams there. I think we topped off last week at, in, in, for the 45 minutes I was doing, we had 500 or 540 some odd unique visitors. I think at any given point, we were up to 22. So slowly but steady, that's what we're doing on this channel, slowly but steady. Hoping to increase that user engagement, hoping to increase the community. My thing, and my motto is always if I can get at least one person out of bed, taking a break from work, et cetera, et cetera, to come out here and do a walk with me or do any of the tasks that I'm proposing, then I feel like I made a difference in that person's life. So again, thank you all. And that's how you can follow me for those updates. So that's the last sort of updates I have on my list. Thank you all so far. Remember, if you wanna see more of this, like me, subscribe, hit that alert notification bell. It really helps the channel out. We can get more engagement. I want to see how many people are doing this. And who knows, maybe one day after this whole pandemic is over, we can get all of you involved in an actual walk where we can meet in a physical location and do a live stream with everyone that's been involved so far. So if you want to see more, please follow me on Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, and Facebook for updates, more videos, more good content like this. And we'll see you all there. Let's move on to the next segment of our show here today. We're going to be talking now, not necessarily random things, some random, they might not really have a good segue, but I think for all of you listening, you're treating this maybe as a podcast. If you remember from the beginning of the week, I said that the videos will be as long as the walk is. You don't have to worry about setting up a timer for how long you want your walk to be. You're going to wake up. But whenever you do your walk, you're going to ask yourself, what's the length of the walk I want to do today? It's a 15 minutes, it's a 25 minutes, it's a 35 minutes. Based on the time you feel is comfortable for you and based on how much you want to push yourself for that day, you pick a video, let the video run. And when the video is done, you're done. So you let me take care of that time management for you. Just walk and enjoy. Came into a little section here that might be a little more, a little more loud, some cars. Luckily, there's not a lot of wind today. I feel like now that's become a sort of joke with some of the people that view, they'll always say, we can hear you because I tend to say, oh, it might be windy. Maybe you can't hear me. When in reality, people are able to hear me just fine. So sorry about covering the video there. I had to switch my hand. Okay, so I was on Reddit yesterday and there's a subreddit called Internet is Beautiful and someone put a link to an app for date night questions, either with lovers or with friends. Now, my girlfriend and I, when we have our date nights, it's always fun to play one of these games because you get to learn a lot about each other. It's a fun way to get to know about each other. It's a fun way to, for example, if you are all into drinking games, it's definitely a great way to introduce a drinking game with a cool spin. So this website is really cool. It's sort of based on those tarot cards that psychics use. And you can pick what type of questions you want asked. 
So if you're playing with a friend, you can pick the friend category. If you are playing with a lover, your significant other, your partner, you can choose that category, which of course is a little more dark, rather not dark, it's a little more deep, a little more romantic, a little more on par with the relationship. And I promise you, you will learn a lot of really cool things about your partner and it'll be a lot of fun. So I'm gonna link to that app on my description. I thought it was really cool. I thought it was really fun. Being a developer myself, I thought it was a really great implementation of a really fun game. The person's wife is an illustrator and she actually designed the app itself, which might I say looks beautiful. And you can tell the developer has a lot of experience. Not only, I actually checked out his resume and his projects and not only does his resume and show that he has experience is the work itself you can tell he really knows how to make a cool product so i'm gonna link to that i think it'll be a lot of fun for all you watching get involved bring some of your friends play this game and we'll see it. and if you're all thinking i'm not sponsored by these people at all i just thought it was a cool game i just want to make you all aware of it just to try something especially now that we're entering the weekend cool and now i'm just going to go off a couple questions i just wrote here some one of the things that I've gotten a lot of is where am I? That happens a lot on our Reddit live streams. Where are you? I'm going to go ahead and switch hands here. So don't mind the video moving all around. A lot of questions I get is where are you? Where are we based? That's something I see a lot, especially on Reddit live stream. I am based in sunny south florida and yes today it is very sunny it's warmer than it has been the rest of the week earlier this week it was really cold at least for south florida when i say really cold i'm talking about i don't know mid 60s low 60s that is really cold for a lot of floridians here i do miss that weather i hope it comes back sooner rather than later but we'll see what happens florida is very bipolar when it comes to weather some days it's really hot and other days it's really cold so we just gotta wait and see check out the weather forecast it's something i'm really into actually it might be a tangent i go off into right now let's talk about the weather we're gonna talk about the weather i love hurricane season i love hurricane season not because of the damage it does i don't think anyone likes hurricane season because of the damage it does i think i love hurricane season because of it's just one of those awesome mother nature type of things when a hurricane is brewing and you see it on the TV strengthening every day, it's just one of those things I can't believe. Fortunately, this year was good for Florida. I know a lot of other areas were hit hard, especially the Gulf. The Gulf was not treated well this year. So it's, it's saddening to see that. But hurricane season is very interesting. I get very excited when hurricane season rolls around and I'm constantly checking NOAA. I'm constantly checking on YouTube channels for good forecasters to talk about what's going to happen. I'm very much interested in seeing this strengthening of the hurricane, rapid intensification as they call it. And I think I've always kind of made the joke that when I retire, okay, so I accidentally slid up from that video. So I'm starting a new one now. We were at 13 minutes before. So we're going to go for another 22. I was saying that when I retire, I might consider being a weatherman. Not a weatherman, a storm chaser. A storm chaser seems pretty fun. It seems pretty uh, adrenaline junkie-esque sort of thing. So I think that's pretty cool. It just really depends on where I am in my life, but we'll see. Who else feels the same about the weather? I know there are natural disasters that happen in other parts of the states. However, hurricanes are the ones that are most easily forecasted and you can easily predict them. So how do you all feel about that? Is the weather something that excites you? It might excite you when it's not happening in your area. Of course, I think that's how most people think about the weather. Let me know, I'm very curious to see, are there any, is there anyone that's watching that's a forecaster now? Is there anyone that's watching that's into storm chasing? How do you get into it? What type of groups do you join? Very curious to hear all this. Very excited to see what we all have to say in the comment section below. Okay, moving on. Future plans is something I also get asked of a lot. What are my future plans? Well, my future plans are to continue living every day to its fullest. And I know that sounds real cheesy, but 
but that's something I've sort of realized in the past couple of days, especially now that I found a hobby that I really enjoy, creating these YouTube videos, going on my daily walks, having fun with the community. It's changed my whole perspective on life. And I, don't, I know that sounds like a drastic thing to say, but instead of working, and granted, I'm keeping my day job. I'm gonna focus on that to make sure I continue growing. But now I have something to look forward to that's not more coding. For all you that don't know, if this is your first time viewing, I'm a software engineer and I've been doing that professionally for three years. And while I do love it, and while it's really challenging, definitely gets my mind moving. The same way that we're moving our bodies physically, my work gets my mind moving. So I'm sort of training my mind every day, which is good. It's fun to find a new hobby. And that's what my hobby is right now. It's walking, making these videos, making these task series for the community to join. And what I really would love to see is more, you know, more viewership, more subscriptions. Of course, that's the dream of any new YouTuber. But I'm really excited because I made a challenge with my girlfriend. Not so much of a challenge, but more of a promise. I told her when we get to 100 subscribers, we're going to go to this fancy Mexican restaurant that we've been keeping an eye on for a while. We're really excited to go, but I want to go when I get 100 subscribers because I want to make it worth it. So if you're all listening to this, make it happen for me. Make it happen for me. Get me to 100 subscribers so that we can go out on a nice date during these tough times. I need some really good Mexican food. I love Mexican food. I love food in general, but I've already spoken about that previously. So I'm going to let it at that. And of course, just continue increasing the viewership from there. Once I get to a thousand subscribers, I'll be able to do YouTube live streams. I think YouTube is a fantastic platform. And while I really enjoy doing Reddit, I think it would actually benefit my viewers to have everything on what platform. So if I can be posting the critical videos to YouTube that follow the workout routines and the live videos also to YouTube under a different playlist, more like ask me anything slash community engagement feedback, I think it will be easier for people to keep along. So that's sort of where I see myself going in the near future. And I've taken some steps to get there. I've tried to increase the production value of my videos by adding things like banners and appealing thumbnails. I'm going to be actually experimenting with some different things now. I had some thoughts last night I wanna try out. Let me know if you all like it. Is it something that you'd like to see more of? That's going to be a lot of fun. Next is free time. What do I do on my free time and how much free time do I have? Well, fortunately for me, my work, one of the things I love about my work the most is the work-life balance and the flexibility that you have. We do, we do work based off of deliverables. So we don't clock in, we don't clock out, but there's an expectation that you're going to get your work done and in most cases exceed that expectation. So if you do all that, you are in good standing. You can continue to grow in the company. You can fulfill your own career goals and continue having a good, flexible work life. So I would say I have as much free time as I need to be able to do what I want. And in my free time, I'm doing this. I am creating these playlists. I'm doing a lot of walking, which believe it or not, two days ago, I think I did too much walking and almost felt like I was going to faint, which... Uh, made me extremely hungry, and I went to Chick-fil-A and had probably one of the best meals I've had in a long time. I got pretty much large of everything, and I ate so much, it felt really good. Hmm. So this is what I do on my free time. Before this, I would say I was probably doing a lot of gaming. Cyberpunk 27, 2077 is coming out soon, so I probably will be spending time on that, but don't need to fret. I will continue on this promise, and I will continue making these videos. So we're not going anywhere. We're going to get to our fitness goals. Stay tuned here with me on task with me. Talking a little bit about music. What type of music do I like? I like alternative rock. Alternative rock is my favorite type of music. Now, maybe I should say rock. I love emo rock. I know it sounds weird. Everyone loved emo rock in 2007. I still do. I love my chemical romance. Chiodos, people like that, Fallout Boy, 
Brand New, list goes on and on. These are the type of bands I like. I would say my favorite bands growing up as a kid were probably the Red Hot Chili Peppers and Linkin Park. Now, if any of you have Spotify, you all know that a couple of days ago, there was a sort of summary of the year that came out and there was a list of your top genres. I got together with a Venezuelan girl two years ago and we're still dating today. My number one genre is now Latin music. And on top of that, the amount of Hispanic foods that I've eaten have increased dramatically. And I frankly, I love it. Now I listen to a lot of J Balvin. I listen to a lot of Maluma. I listen to a lot of Bad Bunny. I listen to a lot to Anuel AA. These are people that I really like. I've always sort of liked Hispanic music, but not as much as I do now. It feels good, it makes me feel like I'm on vacation. Maybe that's their intent. I'm gonna be turning around here to get away from the traffic so the noise is not too bad. So I thought that was really funny. How music changes depending on who you're with, depending on the time of your life, many, many other factors included. Concerts. I've been to not many concerts, unfortunately. When I was in university, one of my good friends, his name was Elliot, he invited me to a Red Hot Chili Peppers concert on a whim. I'm talking about I was in class and I got a text message and he asked me, do you want to go to the Red Hot Chili Peppers concert? And I said, yeah, I jumped on it. Now we were sitting way up at the top. I couldn't really see that much, but the music was loud enough. I was able to hear the music. I was able to sing. We had a great time. Elliot, if you're listening, that was by far one of the best moments of my life. And I, th I thought, me being completely honest, I thought that the fact that we didn't talk that much, yet you still thought of inviting me, I thought that was real cool. I thought that was super cool. Because that's just sometimes how it is. Do you all know people in your life that you don't talk to that much, but you know just enough about them to know what they might be interested in? So when an opportunity comes, you take it, right? You take that opportunity to spend time with them. So we're coming up now on, I believe, 19 minutes. The video cut off before. I accidentally touched the screen and canceled the video. No need. We'll just merge these videos together and we'll continue. We're coming up on 20 minutes now. We got 15 more minutes for our 35-minute walk. It's been a lot of fun walking this week, and I definitely feel like I have made progress with my own fitness goals. I feel like my legs have gotten stronger, actually, and my cardio has improved, believe it or not. So for anyone that's joining now, if you're watching a little bit later in the video, I want to encourage you to follow me on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit, where I'll be posting updates regarding the tasks I'm doing, progress, so on and so forth. If you like these videos, go ahead, click that like button, subscribe, hit the alert notification bell. It really helps the channel out. It really helps get that outreach out. And you know, I've, I've done research on videos like this on YouTube and they are niche, but they don't have to be niche. I think it just takes someone to get the community involved. People love to work out. People love to feel good. People love to look good, but maybe they need that extra motivation and watching a workout, watching some random workout video uh, doesn't really tailor to them, doesn't really talk to the community. It's just a production, you know, AAA workout video. Well, I'm not saying it's bad. I have watched many of those and have definitely improved on fitness myself. I think people want something a little more intimate and that's what I'm hoping to offer here on this channel. And on top of that, it's not just about fitness. Remember later on, once we're done with walking, we'll get into running, we'll get into bike riding, we'll get into some other really cool tasks that I have planned for you. If anyone's into technology, we'll even get into creating websites and styling websites, so on and so forth. So tasks of all type, we will be covering on this channel. Okay, so we're at a little over 20 minutes. We have 14 minutes left. I'm gonna put my notes away and I'm going to get, I'm actually gonna flip the camera to make this a little easier. I'm going to get my girlfriend's phone that I have in my pocket. Actually, I think the video is upside down, so I'm gonna flip it again. A lot of, a lot of movement going on here today. 
But I want to talk about something really interesting. We went to a restaurant a couple months ago and I was reading on Reddit a subreddit called Cool Guides. And on Cool Guides, there was a guide about cognitive biases, about things people do that are just biases and cognition. And I thought they were so interesting because reading them myself, I knew that I do a lot of these things. And I kind of want to pique your guys' interest here a little bit. I want to get your mind, your thoughts kind of brewing here. And you can all tell me how you feel about these cognitive biases and see if that might interest you. So I'm just going to go ahead and get my girlfriend's phone ready. Just bear with me. Give me one second here. We got about 13 minutes left here and we're gonna talk about some biases so the first bias I want to talk about is called anchoring so let's read the definition of this cognitive bias and see if we can all relate to it so anchoring the first thing you judge influences your judgment of all that follows so let's think about that they even give some examples here it says human minds are associative in nature so the order in which we receive information helps determine the course of our judgments and perceptions. It sounds to me like it's a fancy way of saying first impressions, but it's so true, isn't it? Are we really giving that person a fair shot if we're just judging them on that first impression? What's that other saying? You can't judge a book by its cover. I, I do think that's what this cognitive bias is. And it happens to all of us all the time. Maybe I can work on it a little more so it doesn't happen to me as often. Because again, you don't know. You don't know anything about that person's life. You don't even know what they did that day. What they did that day can influence how you view them. So to just judge them on that first impression might not be entirely fair to that person. Confirmation bias. You favor things that confirm your existing beliefs. We are primed to see and agree with ideas that fit our perceptions and to ignore and dismiss information that conflicts with them. Yeah, that happens a lot when I argue with my girlfriend. <laughs> and I'm sure it happens to a lot of people when they argue with other people. We have existing beliefs and we stick by them. And if we hear something, even though if we know that it's wrong or maybe it doesn't make sense, again, these are my opinions and I'd love to hear what the people think. Maybe I'm not thinking about these the right way, but it sounds to me like even if information is presented to us and it's not correct, as long as it confirms with existing beliefs, we might still tend to side with those. Let's see if we can get some more information here. Think of your ideas and beliefs as software you're actively trying to find problems with rather than things to be defended. Very very interesting the backfire effect when your core beliefs are challenged it can cause you to believe even more strongly let's see if we can take a moment to think about this i know what it's trying to say i'm just trying to find an example of something that's happened to me personally i think it's always good to relate back to that personal level It says, we can experience being wrong about some ideas as an attack upon our very selves or our tribal identity. This can lead to motivated reasoning, which causes us to double down despite disconfirming evidence. What do you all think about that? I want to see what the community thinks. I don't have anything actually off the top of my head that can relate with that bias, but I'm sure that someone here does so i'm gonna do a quick time check here i think we cut off the video at 13 minutes and now we're at 16 minutes that's 23 10 29 so we got six minutes left here so i'll probably pause it when this timer says 25 we might be going a little over our 35 minutes 
But we'll, we'll consider that a bonus for anyone that's watching. You get that extra minute, maybe a couple extra seconds in your walk today. Nothing wrong with that. If anything, be proud of the fact that you've gotten to the point where you can push yourself just a little more and you're comfortable with it. It means that you've grown, you've gotten stronger. Let's go ahead and continue here. A just world hypothesis. Your preference for a just world makes you presume that it exists. I absolutely fall victim to this all of the time. This is my view of it. I think it means that we grow up with an expectation of how the world should be because of the way that we were raised. And when things don't go as planned, when reality does not meet those expectations, I think we just get really upset. But I think really the frame of thinking should be, we have to understand this is not a just world and we have to be okay with that. It says a world which people don't always get what they deserve, hard work doesn't always pay off, and injustice happens is an unfortunate one that threatens our preferred narrative. Sorry about that. However, it is also the reality. Very well said. Let's keep going here. Sunk cost fallacy. You irrationally cling to things that have already cost you something. Yeah. This happens a lot with me and a lot of times with friends. Sometimes I almost think it's kind of like a, an addendum or a sister of buyer's remorse. Maybe it means the same thing. So let's read that again. You would rationally cling to things that have already cost you something. I think we tend to feel maybe good or bad about some purchase, but the purchase has already been made. You can't do anything about it. So it's better just to move on. Unless you can get a refund. If you get your money back, then hey, more power to you. But if you can't, move on. Continue living your life. You've already spent the money. There's not much you can do today. But what you can do is make sure it doesn't happen again. I think that's really important. Dunning-Kruger effect. Ooh, the more you know, the less confident you're likely to be. Ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. When you don't know what you don't know, there's nothing to be stressed out about. You just know what you do. You have your view of the world and you're content with that. And there is, at least I think, nothing wrong with that. Why would you have to screw with someone's happiness if they're happy, if they're contentful? If that's how they're living their life, that's how they're living their life. But you will see that a lot of people want to learn. There's also nothing wrong with that, the pursuit of knowledge. It's good, it's healthy. But what happens when you start learning more? When you start learning more about the world, the things around you, when you start peeling back those layers in the onion, yeah, you'll see that maybe the world's a little more grim than you anticipated. And it's all, always the healthiest mindset to be in, but it's what happens. So the more you know, the more likely you are to be stressed out, the more likely you are to compare yourself with norms and the status quo. At least that's what I think. How many of you fall prey to this? Very interesting, very interesting topic. The Barnum effect. You see personal specifics and vague statements by filling in the gaps. Sounds a little bit vague. Let's read into it a little bit more because our minds are given to making connections, it's easy for us to take nebulous statements and find ways to interpret them so that they seem specific and personal. Physics, astrologers, and others use this bias to make it, I'm sorry, not physics, psychics, astrologers, and others use this bias to make it seem like they're telling you something relevant. Consider how things might be interpreted to apply to anyone, not just you. Oh, I see. You see personal specifics and vague statements by filling in the gaps. So someone might be telling you something that's pretty vague, but we tend to fill in those vague gaps ourselves and make them seem like they're relevant to us, when really there can just be a blanket statement to anyone that's listening. That's a good point, something to think about. What I hope these biases are teaching us today is just gotta think a little more logically you got to understand where statements and information is coming from. Really think about it critically. So you make sure that you're thinking about it correctly. You're getting the information the way you want it to be presented, so on and so forth. I think this is all really cool. I'm, I'm definitely going to put a link to this cool guide on Reddit. We, my girlfriend and I talked about this for three hours at the restaurant and it was phenomenal. Probably one of the deepest conversations we've had. Framing effect. You allow yourself to be unduly influenced 
by context and delivery. We like to think that we think independently, but the truth is that all of us are in fact influenced by delivery, framing, and subtle cues. This is why the ad industry is a thing, despite almost anyone believing they're not affected by advertising messages. That's true. How many of us like to think that maybe we're a little more independent, a little more raw, a little more underground, but maybe in reality, we're actually framed by a lot of the influences we see around us. Again, I don't think there's anything particularly wrong in that, but maybe we need to take a step back and think about our genuineness, genuineness, and consider, have we been influenced? Is this really something novel? So on and so forth. Think about that. In-group bias. You unfairly favor those who belong to your group. Oh, this is a classic high school dilemma, a classic adolescence and puberty dilemma. We tend to favor those that are in our, in our group, of course. There's a bias towards the people that we already know. Even if someone else might seem a little more appealing, or they might present something that's factually correct, we're going to support those that we already know. They're our friends, of course. We've known them. Why would we go against them? Kind of seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? But apparently it's a cognitive bias. Nonetheless, something to think about. So I'm gonna let this go for another three minutes. I know the video timing got a little bit out of whack today. Again, think of it as a reward and not necessarily like you're doing more walking when you feel like you shouldn't have to. We're going to keep doing the walking, go that extra two minutes. I wanna take these last two minutes to say thank you all so much for watching the video today. I really appreciate the audience that we've had so far. I'm very much excited to see the amount of subscribers and viewership increase over these next couple of days. Remember, if you want to see more types of these videos, especially live ones, make sure you follow me on Reddit, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, especially Twitter. I have been a little more adamant about making sure I post updates there for people to see. I've been trying to start a little Facebook group and a page so I can get more eyes there. Highly encourage you all to check those out. Again, I'm not going to be going live tomorrow. I'm going to be taking a rest day. My intent with Tasks With Me is to get a couple of people or a whole community watching my videos, doing tasks they may have not otherwise done if it weren't for someone out here motivating them and talking them through it. So these tasks will range from walking to running to bike riding to technology to maybe cooking, doing random things. And I want to do it with the community together. If that's something that interests you, let me know. I'm still an early channel. I'm quick to adapt. I'm trying new things out, trying to see what works. I'm even looking, not so much yet. I want to make sure that I have, you know, good, good time spent with the raw materials, but I'm looking into investing in a GoPro, something to increase the production quality a little bit, but we'll see when that happens, when it happens. Thank you all again so much for watching. It's been a pleasure getting through this first week with you all ending on our 35 minute walk. I will see you all on Monday for a 15 minute walk with next week ending on a 38 minute walk, which might be what this video is, 38 minutes. Stay fit and stay healthy. See you all next time.